for a walk gives us a great opportunity to think. This week as I'm walking on the beach, I'm thinking about love. We know that there are many kinds of love. Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, is a whole different thing from Paris, the city of amour love. Jesus told us that the law was summarized in two commandments. The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. This Jesus kind of love required a whole new word in the Greek language, agape. The Ten Commandments are often broken down into two halves. The first three, if you use Protestant numbering, or two, if you use Roman Catholic numbering, are oriented toward our vertical relationship with God. Jesus says that these fall under the umbrella of the Jewish uh, Shema, loving God. The last seven or eight are what Paul is addressing here. They fall under the umbrella of loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. Loving one another is not presented as an extra or in any way tangential to being a Christian. It is what we owe one another. If we fail to love God or love another person, we become debtors in need of forgiveness. This is why in the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, Jesus says, forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. In other words, forgive us for falling short in loving God and loving others. So, if you're hearing this song in your head, Paul is answering that question. Love is everything. In case we are struggling with what love actually is, Paul points out that love does no harm to a neighbor. Love isn't the forfeiture of principles to keep peace. Love does not allow us to become enablers of evil in others. Love is relating to someone in the ways that are in their interests and God's interests in them. Sometimes love must be tough. But love must, above all, be compassionate, stretching to meet the needs of others. That is why when the rich young ruler responded to Jesus, affirming that we should love our neighbor as ourselves, he then asked, who is my neighbor? Jesus told him the parable of the Good Samaritan. People sometimes have the idea that the people of the church ought to be everything the Bible says we should be. And if you go to church, anything less than that is hypocrisy. But the Bible never makes such a claim. We will never be all that we should be until we see Jesus face to face. The church is where people go to heal and to grow in letting the light and love of Christ shine ever more brightly and warmly through us as the Holy Spirit enables us to draw ever closer to Jesus in community. To clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ is not putting on a costume and pretending to be someone we're not. It is to open ourselves to the Spirit's sanctifying work to be ever more accurately reflecting the truth and love of Christ himself. The one word that best sums up what that means is the word love, agape. In many ways, I, like many others, have found the church to be disappointing, falling short of this call to love. But then I think about the practical ways in which the church is loving and serving the world. Food banks, schools, hospitals, shelters, rehabilitation centers, temporary housing, and the list goes on, and that is only the tip of the iceberg. So many members of Christ's body find small ways to meet the needs of others in everyday acts of sacrificial love, from offering to dog sit for us or check on a loved one while we're out of town to bringing food to someone sick or in mourning. 
We have church ministries of environmental stewardship, but also countless little individual acts of conserving fuel, organic gardening, or not wasting water. We have church ministries of social justice, but also countless little individual acts of helping someone find a job or making them aware of training resources. The debt that God gives us to love Him, which means to love others, has brought measureless truth, justice, and love into a world that so desperately needs it. If you are a lover, thank you for speaking truth and living love. It really is what the world needs now.